Uh, I want with pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Ingo von Lefern, uh, friend of uh, our hospital. Professor Lefern is the medical director of the obstetric and gynecology in Al Albertinen Group, Hamburg, Germany. He is the head of the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics in Albertinen Hospital. Professor Lefern is one of the leading specialists in the field of operative gynecology in Germany. Under his supervision, at the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology in Albertinen Hospital in Hamburg, about 3,500 gynecological surgeries are performed annually using innovative ultrasound techniques, laser therapy and minimally invasive surgery. It is my pleasure to introduce again Professor Lefern with uh, 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 presentation, reproductive surgery, how a surgeon can increase the pregnancy rate. Please, Professor Lefer. Okay. Okay. Can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I want to, to thank Professor Esteria for these nice words and uh, for organizing this uh, interesting symposium. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me to give this lecture. Um, I, I will switch to my lecture now. So my, um, my, my uh, topic is what can re reproductive surgery do uh, to increase the fertility of women? And uh, there are some um, things we can do. This is uh, one is we can do an invasive di diagnostic to find the reason of the infertility or subfertility. Uh, we can uh, do a tubal reconstruction, um, exa for example, after tubal sterilization or uh, exouterine pregnancy. Um, we can make oocyte uptake uh, possible, for example, uh, ovariolysis or some, some uh, salpingolysis, and we can remove endometriosis. We can uh, do cytoreductive surgery for adenomyosis, and we uh, can remove fibrids. These are the topics of my lecture now, and uh, at, at last, the metroplasty. Um, or removal of uterine septums we just heard about, but I didn't understand the last lecture because um, it was not in English and not in German. So, sorry, I, do, I don't know what um, what you hear before in the lecture before, but uh, it's a, a small topic for me now, the metroplasty. So, um, the surgical diagnostic, so invasive surgical diagnostic for infertility, means to find the intrauterine facts of uh, infertility, for example, pileps, um, uh, septums or adhesions, uh, the tubal facts, uh, for example, adhesions and hydatides. We will hear more about the hydatides um, later. And uh, the ovarian facts, uh, for example, the adhesions and endometriosis. So in this picture, you can see the um, the right ovary is um, is covered by adhesions and uh, an oocyte uptake is not possible in this uh, in this case. So if we remove the adhesions, oh, we can um, make oocyte uptake possible. Uh, in this um, picture, you see the the right tube is hanging in the in the Douglas pouch and. In my opinion, and what I believe is that the oocyte uptake uh, happens in the ductless pouch, and the, the the tube is waiting here, is hanging in the ductless pouch and pouch and waiting for the for the uh, egg falling in the ductless pou pouch. And if there are adhes adhesions and uh, it's not possible for the tube to 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 be here in this region. Um, 
their um, oocyte uptake cannot happen. So what surgeons can do is to look after the possibility for the tube to to be in to, to be in this region here and waiting for the uh, oocyte. So the next what what we see is here is a fine tube, and there are fine fimbries, and uh, the the tube is uh, is uh, everything is fine. But here was a um, it's a perfectly smooth ductless, but here was um, endometriosis we have removed, and so maybe we did something good for um, spontaneous conception. So in this, this video, you, you see uh, the ductless pouch. There are deep pockets in the ductless pouch, so that oocyte uptake is very difficult. Um, the after ovulation, the egg uh, maybe can fall into this pocket and uh, it's not reachable for the tube. Um, and in this case, you see uh, a fat necrosis has fallen into the pocket. But what we can do is to to uh, make a uh, make a smooth uh, ductless pouch um, for a better um, oocyte uptake. So um, one information, uh, one information I had uh, one years um, before I didn't know about this, but there is a um, there is a um, study from Rashid um, from Egypt. Um, he um, di divided um, departed two groups. Um, one. Uh, the, the, the patients has uh, had um, unexplained uh, infertility and they had hydatides and he departed two groups. One group uh, with uh, hydatides have been removed and one group with no intervention. And what is the result uh, after three months? Um, the group with the um, removed hydatides had a pregnancy rate of about 60% and the group without um, the any intervention had the pregnancy rate about 20 percent and the pregnancy rate was higher in group one um, uh, regardless um, of the diameters of the of the hydatides but the most significant difference was found in the diameter between one and two centimeters so here you see the hydatide uh, is, is removed. And I think, uh, in my opinion, it has something to do with the oocyte uptake in the ductless pouch. So here you see in this picture, the chromal perturbation is, uh, is fine and uh, the hydatide is removed. Sorry, this... Uh, so next topic is the tubal sterilization reversal. So in Germany, some women want to have a tubal sterilization and after a while they are sad about their decision and want to um, want to have a, a refertilization. So um, we do this in our hospital and um, the best conditions for a success of these technique is when the sterilization is less than eight years ago, less than eight years ago, when women's age is less than 40 years, you see a big difference uh, between these uh, young women and um, uh, the young women, but uh, 40 years plus. Uh, sterilization, uh, not directly postpartum, uh, directly postpartum is, uh, is a bad condition and uh, there is no, but but there is no difference between uh, diverse methods of sterilization. But postpartum sterilization is uh, is a bad condition. So um, you see here in this picture and in, in this video, uh, the technique I use. We do it laparoscopically, and uh, now we have here the stump and we prepare the stump first. Then refresh the, the stump 
This is the proximal stump. Now is the distal stamp. Refreshing again. And then connect each other. And the first stitch is the most important for a good connection. You can use this technique also for reconstruction after uh, extrauterine um, um, pregnancy with damage, damage uh, of the tubes. We do some so about five stitches and always next to the loom, not into the loom. You see here the lumen. We use the five zero rope. And a sharp needle. So because of the. The time. Um, video is uh, I think uh, double double speed so after connecting we we do the chromopatu you see there is no leakage here and uh, the chromo perturbation is positive uh, in this in this case now um, sorry next so i have a, um, a funny story for you um, this is a 32 years old woman who uh, she uh, had a sterilization after her fourth uh, cesarean section, so she had four children, but very soon she was sad about her decision and wanted to make everything back. So uh, we made a refertilization, as you s have seen before in the video, and uh, half a year later she got pregnant spontaneously, but with uh, Gemini. So she got her 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 uh, an, another uh, cesarean section and had uh, six children now and two years later she became pregnant again but uh, it was unplanned so she got a uh, her sixth cesarean section with her seventh child and um, after that we made a sterilization again so another topic um, of reproductive surgery is the uh, cytoreductive uh, surgery for adenomyosis and I want to show you um, I have not not many studies for you but I um, want to show you the results of a meta-analysis from Vettelini um, it was uh, about um, 2014 and uh, he showed the outcome of um, uh, of IVF in women with adenomyosis or not. Just the presence of adenomyosis was different. And what he saw in this, uh, in this analysis was that the pregnancy rate was reduced for, uh, for 28%. The implantation rate was re reduced from for 23% uh, and the life birth rate was reduced for 30%. And what I think is the most uh, important um, is that the miscarriage rate uh, was much higher in the presence of, um, of adenomyosis um, um, and with a, the with a amount of 32% um, um, versus 14% without adenomyosis. So uh, there are some studies who, several studies who show that reduction of pain and increase in fertility are significant higher after cytoreductive surgery. 
um, most in combination with drug therapy with GnRH analoga for three to six months. So um, what we do in our hospital is the Saremi technique because uh, I think it's a it's an easy technique and um, it's um, easy to per, rather easy to perform and we have good experience with that. So what we do here, um, so what what we do here is uh, to to open uh, the the uterus um, longitudinal and move the the adenomyosis um, quarter for quarter. So what you have to notice is that we we really can only reduce the adenomyosis. We can't. Um, we can't heal the adenomyosis, but we reduce it. So you can see here in this video here the technique of Saremi. Um, we we make a longitudinal incision, then preparation of the serosa site and the and the uh, mucosa site, and then remove the adenomyosis quarter for quarter on the back wall and on the on the front wall and sewing the layers without any gaps this is very important to have no hematoma uh, Professor Leveron, your microphone is muted. Please unmute your microphone. Like the last 20 seconds, your microphone got muted. Can you hear me again? Yes, yes. OK, so the next topic will be the uh, removal of fibrids. And because of the shortness of time, just a few statements about the fibrids and uh, the relevance to miscarriage and subfertility. Um, um, relevant for, for miscarriage and subfertility are uh, fibrids when they are in the cavity. They, when they are submucose, when they are bigger than four centimeters, and when there are lots of fibrids, any size. But what means lots of fibrids? Um, this is no, there is no exact definition, but um, in my opinion, it's about more than five uh, fibrids. So, um, in my opinion, you have really to avoid the distortion of the endometrium. Therefore, I often um, decide to remove the, the submucose uh, fibrids better by laparoscopy than by hysteroscopy, not to damage here the, um, the endometrium. And I will show you the technique um, of the removal of a fibrid. Again, you got muted, uh, uh, Dr. Leffen. I don't know why, uh, but you got muted again. Professor for Leffen, you, you uh, switched off your microphone. Can you turn it on again? OK. So I, I didn't do anything, sorry. OK. <laughs> Sorry, but I didn't do anything. But uh, uh, okay, if it's muted again, uh, please tell me. So I, I will continue now. Uh, what I, I didn't know what you heard before, but uh, what I wanted to say is that the um, 
that, in my opinion, we have to avoid to destroy the endometrium by removal of the fibrids. And uh, I often decide to remove the uh, mucose, uh, submucose fibrids better by laparoscopy than by hysteroscopy, not to avoid this, uh, not to destroy the, the endometrium here. And um, what you see here is the, uh, the removal of a fibrid. And uh, in this, in this, uh, this is the part of, uh, of the intracavity, the intracavity part. And you can very, uh, very careful, you can um, um, preparate the whole endometrium sac and then cover it with the, with the myometrium. So if you do a hysteroscopy after that, you, you would not find any scar. So I have a, a special case uh, for you. This is a, a 39 old woman with uh, lots of fibrids. And if you if you if you, uh, you see here, there are lots of fibrids in the cavity. I opened the cavity um, by laparotomy, and we removed all the fibrids, intracavity and intramural. And it, they, there were eight, 40, 48 fibrids we have removed. And then we did a reconstruction of the uterus. And uh, there was one fibroid left, but I uh, removed it um, later on. So um, uh, half a year later, um, she uh, had a sp spontaneous conception and uh, had a cesarean section and everything was fine. And as you see, it's a nice baby. So the last topic is the metroplastic by Beacon uterus. Um, um, just one statement, the life birth rate uh, uh, as um, with a Beacon uterus without intervention is 55%. And the, um, the life birth rate after metroplasty is 80%. So um, what you see here is the hysteroscopy side of the uterus, beacon uterus, and uh, here is a uh, in front is a is a small septum, but the the septum is um, bigger in the in the background, and what we do is here to cut the septum and then uh, remove the septum first, just an incision and then removal of the septums until we see the the um, myometrium, the, the same myometrium. And uh, the next video, you see the second look, hysteroscopy after three months. And uh, it's a fine cavity. And maybe this woman can get pregnant with, better pregnant with this, uh, with this uterus. So thank you very much for your for listening and uh, best wishes from Hamburg and take care everybody. Thank you professor for Leffen, professor Seref. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, some questions and opinion. Dr. Magonska. Oh, Dr. Dr. Magonska microphone. Dr. Magonska. Hello, Professor von Leffen. Uh, it is Hello. very nice to see you and uh, hear you uh, hear your very good talk on our symposium. I wanted to ask you uh, for how long do you recommend uh, women after adenomyosis surgery to protect from pregnancy? Uh, so um, there there are no data for that. Uh, so it's a good question, but there are no data, and in my opinion. Um, at least three months, but uh, after three months, I do a, uh, do an ultrasound, and uh, if everything is fine and we see no hematoma and no scars, she can get pregnant. Um, if there is uh, a, a very big surgery, um, has if, if happened a very big surgery, I recommend six months, but not longer. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Some other questions? Uh, Professor Leferm, uh, thank you for the lecture. And um, I have two questions to you. One of them is uh, about the hydatids, the removing of hydatids. I have uh, some impression that only laparotomy stimulates spontaneous ovulation. Do you think that uh, uh, operation itself uh, or removing of hydatides uh, make these results after operation? And uh, second question is, do you use stent for uh, canalization of endosalpings when uh, make the array canalization of the uh, salpings? So the first, answer, the first answer is uh, in this study, uh, all of the women had a surgery, but they had just uh, one had a diagnostic surgery and one had an intervention. So. Yeah. In my opinion, this this is not the reason because why they got pregnant. Um, because we we uh, um, they 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 did the intervention at the tubes. Uh, and the second uh, second uh, answer is no, we do not use any stents. Um, but um, and I think it's very difficult. I, I tried it and I think it's difficult to to use the stands. Um, uh, so no, I don't. But I try uh, the the um, um, the um, chromoperturbation and if chromoperturbation happens uh, correctly, then I leave it like this. Oh, thank you. Some other questions or opinion from uh, floor? No, thank you. My pleasure <laughs> to <laughs> hear you. See Bye. you next year. Oh, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> okay.